The price of the 7900 XT from AMD has been dropping so much that I think we now need to compare it against a different class of GPUs than we did at launch. If I search brand new right now, I can find the 7900 XT listed at as low as $720 uh, from Amazon and Newegg. However, if I click on the Newegg link, there's an additional promo code, and I did actually track that down, and it took an extra $15 off, making it a $705 GPU, and I posted this on my community page to days ago and the deal still is available. So this is not some just flash in the pan, you had to grab it while it was available thing. It has been here for multiple days uh, without selling out at this price. So now we can look at, okay, the 7900 XT, I've previously compared it against uh, GPUs like the 4070 Ti. And at launch, uh, the 4070 Ti was about $800 and it still is. Whereas the 7900 XT at launch was $900 and it was like, is it worth spending $100 more? Well, I've now followed up and looked at, okay, is the 7900 XT worth uh, you know, $100 less than a 4070 Ti? But now it's actually splitting the difference between the 4070 Ti and the 4070 non-Ti. The 4070 is a $600 graphics card. So now we've got the 4070 at 600, the 7900 XT at 700, and the 4070 Ti at 800. So now it actually is worth comparing against the 4070 because it's very possible that somebody could have been trying to uh, look at the $600 price point, thinking about the 4070. They don't have $800 in their budget, but they might be able to stretch up to 700 and just be wondering, is it worth the extra $100? However, while I was going to do 4070 versus 7900 XT, it sh should be noted that the 6950 XT from AMD is still also available right around the $600 mark. It looks like currently around $580. And so if you're thinking about a, a $600 GPU like the 4070, it would make sense to also consider what the 6950 XT has to offer. So that's where we get the comparisons in this video. Um, now these are all very expensive, so you should definitely look into both the used market and you should be looking into selling your current hardware in order to make up the price difference on your new one. And today's sponsor, Jawa.gg, is a fantastic place to do that. If you follow my link in the pin description or uh, sorry, pin comment or video description, uh, you can scroll down and see "Sell Your GPU ASAP." You click that and you can now get the best price for your GPU from Jawa.gg. Now there's a couple of really useful options here. Uh, you can list your card for sale, similar, uh, you know, where, where you manage the listing yourself, you choose your price, a gamer buys your graphics card, ships out uh, within three business days, and you get paid two days after buy the buyer receives the GPU. However, Jawa offers a, uh, a different option that you won't see at a lot of competing sites, which is you could just avoid all of that hassle. You don't have to wait on a buyer. You get immediate results by selling directly to Jawa themselves. Uh, you tell them the GPU model and condition, they offer you a price immediately, you ship your GPU to Jawa, they receive it, inspect it, and pay you in one business day. So again, follow the link in the video description, pinned comment in order to sell your GPU and help uh, fund your next upgrade. Now, the specific models of GPUs I'm looking at in this video are the uh, uh, PowerColor Hellhound 7900 XT uh, for the uh, AMD. And the 6950 XT I'm testing in this video is the, uh, what is it, the XS XFX Merc 319 Black. And then the um, NVIDIA 4070 is the Founders Edition model they sent over. Let's hop into the benchmarks and see how these cards stack up. And then I'll give you some final thoughts, especially on is it worth an extra $100 uh, over the 4070 to get your 7900 XT. We'll start with some PlayStation 5 exclusives that have been ported to PC and taking a look at Returnal at 4K Epic settings. We're seeing all the GPUs doing well. The 4070 is hanging out in the mid 50s, whereas the 6950 XT is in the mid 60s, and the 7900 XT is closing in on 80 frames per second, giving the 6950 XT a 22% lead over the 4070, and the 7900 XT a 48% lead over the 4070, and we see similar results in the 1% lows. If we drop down to 1440p epic settings, now even the 4070 is offering a high refresh rate experience at around 90 FPS with the 6950 XT up around 110 FPS and the 7900 XT up around 135 FPS. 
Uh, that's giving the 6950 XT a 22% lead over the 4070 and the 7900 XT a 50% lead over the 4070. Again, similar results in the 1% lows, although the leads are a bit smaller there than they are on the averages. It's not a massive difference and uh, plays out pretty similarly. Going down to 1080p resolution, uh, which again, for some of these GPUs, especially the 7900 XT might not be the uh, you know, most people's target resolution, but it's interesting to see how the scaling goes. Uh, we now see the 4070 around 120 FPS, the 6950 XT in the mid 140s, and the 7900 XT up in the mid 170s. So they're all crushing it here. The 6950 XT is 21% ahead of the 4070, and the 7900 XT is 48% ahead of the 4070 at these settings. But there are more demanding PlayStation 5 games out there that have been ported to PC, like The Last of Us Part 1. At 4K Ultra, this game uses a lot of VRAM, but it seems to be a, a pretty NVIDIA-favored title. We see the 4070 5% ahead of the 6950 XT here, um, and the 7900 XT 17% ahead of the 6950 XT, and none of them are offering a 60 FPS experience, with the 4070 and 6950 XT in kind of the low 40s, and the 7900 XT in the upper 40s. If we drop down to 1440p ultra settings, all the GPUs are doing a lot better, but actually, believe it or not, I see the 4070 producing the highest results here. Uh, it has a 23% lead over the 6950 XT, and the 7900 XT kind of splits the difference with a 12% lead over the uh, 6950 XT, with the 4070 coming in around 80 FPS, the 6950 XT around 65, and the 7900 XT uh, in the low 70s. So all playable there. And then dropping down to 1080p Ultra, uh, interestingly, the 4070 increases its lead. It now has a 40% lead over the 6950 XT, and the 7900 XT isn't that far ahead of the 6950 XT. It's only leading by 6%. Uh, these results certainly surprised me, but it is what I'm seeing here. So certainly seems like this game is favoring NVIDIA, and it's not a ray tracing title or anything like that, and is pretty VRAM heavy. But then when we take a look at Forspoken, which uh, at its ultra high preset, which is maximum preset, does include ray tracing, we actually now see the AMD GPUs faring a little bit better here. And I think it's because this is spilling over 12 gigabytes of VRAM. You can see both the AMD GPUs allocating more than 12. And um, here we see the 6950 XT ahead of the 4070 by 6% and the 7900 XT ahead of the 4070 by 33%. Now, we will drop it down to 1440p, again, at the ultra-high preset, which still includes ray tracing, and it does use a bit less VRAM here. It does not seem to be spilling over the 12 gigabytes, and that allows the 4070 to take an 11% lead over the 6950 XT, uh, again, showing NVIDIA's ray tracing lead. However, the 7900 XT is still offering better performance than the 4070, and it is 31% ahead of the 6950 XT. I can't uh, talk about the 1% lows in this built-in benchmark because it goes through load screens that kind of mess with those. Uh, if we go down to 1080p at the ultra-high preset, which once again includes ray tracing, we now see the 4070 13% ahead of the 6950 XT and the 7900 XT is 35% ahead of the 6950 XT. At uh, 1080p resolution, they're all offering very high frame rates, um, with the 4070 closing in near to 100 FPS, the 6950 XT kind of in the mid 80s, and the 7900 XT uh, over 112 FPS. Now, let's do some cross-platform uh, games, but current gen only. With A Plague Tale Requiem at 4K Ultra, we now see uh, the 6950 XT 11% ahead of the 4070, and the 7900 XT 40% ahead of the 4070, although none of them are delivering a 60 FPS average at 4K Ultra. This game does feature DLSS, but not FSR, and it does have DLSS frame generation, so if you did use those features, it would help the 4070 here. At 1440p Ultra, 
uh, we see the gap shrink uh, between the 4070 and the 6950 XT, with the 6950 XT taking a 5% lead over the 4070, so very similar performance there. And the 7900 XT is 31% ahead of the 4070. Uh, I think the lower the resolution goes, the 4070 seems to benefit uh, since it has the more limited memory bandwidth. Um, I think it, it does better at the lower resolutions, which we continue to see here as we go down to 1080p Ultra. We now see the 4070 basically tied with the 6950 XT. It has a 1% 1, 1 lead. Um, and the 7900 XT is 22% ahead of the 6950 XT. So again, as we dropped the resolution, the 4070 kind of performed better relatively. And um, uh, that is something that we saw in some of the other titles as well. Now let's take a look at Unreal Engine 4 kind of pushed to its limits with uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor at 4K epic settings. And at these settings, none of the GPUs are going to be a rock solid 60 FPS, um, but the 6950 XT is offering 19% better performance than the 4070, and the 7900 XT is 44% ahead of the 4070. Uh, the 4070 is kind of in the mid 30s, the 6950 XT in the low 40s, and the 7900 XT in the low 50s. So certainly meaningful performance gaps in this game. If we enable ray tracing on the Epic preset and stay at 4K native resolution, the 4070 doesn't lose that much of its performance, whereas the 6950 XT takes a bigger hit and is now only 3% ahead of the 4070, but it is still winning with ray tracing enabled, although the 1% lows are more of a tie and you know the 4070 is, is about 3% ahead there. So we'll call it a tie overall on those. The 7900 XT is 22% ahead of the 4070, um, but less in the 1% lows. If we go ahead and drop down to 1440p resolution, where I think all of these GPUs are a lot more comfortable in the latest games, at epic settings with no ray tracing, we see the 6950 XT winning by 21% over the 4070, and the 7900 XT ahead 43% over the 4070. The 6950 XT kind of just splitting the middle of the difference there but all GPUs offering a good experience here. With the 4070 in the 70s, the 6950 XT close to 90 FPS and the 7900 XT over 100 frames per second. If we enable ray tracing but stay at 1440p, uh, we now see the uh, 4070 and the 6950 XT basically tied in the averages, although the 4070 is pulling ahead in the 1% lows by 33%, and the 7900 XT is 18% ahead of the 6950 XT on average, but only 5% in the 1% lows. So overall, uh, the NVIDIA GPU is offering a smoother experience in the 1% lows here, especially it seems with ray tracing enabled. You can see a bit of spikier frame time graphs on the AMD GPUs if you pay attention to that through that benchmark run. If we go down to 1080p resolution at epic settings with ray tracing turned off, we see the 6950 XT offering a 16% lead over the 4070, and the 7900 XT offering a 35% lead over the 4070. In the 1% lows, however, the 4070 does have a 28% lead over the 7900 XT, and the 6950 XT is basically tied with the 7900 XT. So once again, it seems like in this particular game, NVIDIA does have um, better handling on the 1% lows. Again, that's visible in the frame time graph as a little bit more spikiness on the AMD GPUs. And that uh, continues to happen as we enable ray tracing at 1080p. All the GPUs are offering a high enough uh, refresh rate experience here. Um, but again, the frame time graph a bit smoother and the 1% low is a bit better on the 4070. The 4070 here on average is 7% ahead of the 6950 XT, and the 7900 XT is 17% ahead of the 6950 XT. Uh, but in the 1% lows, the 4070 is 38% ahead of the 6950 XT, and the 7900 XT is 13% ahead of the 6950 XT. Let's move into Unreal Engine 5, Layers of Fear at 4K high, which is the highest it goes, but without ray tracing 
pricing enabled. It does have the Lumen lighting system, but doesn't doesn't take advantage of Nanite or some of the other Unreal Engine 5 features. We see the 7900 XT is able to offer us over 60 FPS, and it's a 27% lead over the 4070, with 6950 XT only 8% ahead of, of the 4070. If we turn ray tracing on, the 6950 XT is basically tied with the 4070, although it does have a 2% lead on average, but the 4070 has a 3% lead in the 1% lows. It's really about the same, although the 7900 XT with ray tracing on here, which does the hardware acceleration to the Lumen lighting system, is 25% ahead over the 4070, and ahead in the 1% lows. <clears throat> If we move to uh, 1440p high settings without hardware accelerated ray tracing, we now see the 6950 XT ahead 12% over the 4070 and the 7900 XT 27% ahead of the 4070. Uh, the 1% um, the lows are showing very similar results and all GPUs are delivering a high refresh rate experience. Uh, if we turn ray tracing on, the 6950 XT and the 4070 are basically tied. The 6950 XT has a 1% lead in the averages, although the 4070 has a 7% lead in the 1% lows, all of them offering a good experience and a pretty stable frame time graph. Um, the 7900 XT is 18% uh, ahead over the 4070 on the average FPS. If we go down to 1080p resolution, again, they're all offering a high refresh rate experience at 1080p high settings. The 6950 XT is 6% ahead of the 4070, and the 7900 XT is 20% ahead of the 4070, seeing similar results in the 1% lows, with the 6950 XT leading by 3% over the 4070, and the 7900 XT ahead 19% over the 4070. If we turn ray tracing on at 1080p, we now see the 4070 take a lead by 8% over the 6950 XT on average and 14% in the 1% lows. The 7900 XT is 19% ahead of the 6950 XT, placing the 4070 kind of in the middle there, and the 7900 XT is 23% of the head of the 6950 XT in the 1% lows. Let's move into some uh, cross-gen games, starting with Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 at 4 4K balanced preset, and here we see the 7900 XT making a statement. It has a 63% lead over the 4070, and the 6950 XT has a 20% lead over the 4070. We see fairly similar results in the 1% lows, with the 6950 XT 26% ahead of the 4070, and the 7900 XT 58% ahead of the 4070. Now, this game does tend to be an AMD favored benchmark, but it is also a very popular game, so worth testing and making note of if this is your game. If we drop down to 1440p at the balanced preset, we see the 6950 XT 9% ahead of the 4070, so the 4070 closing some of that gap as we drop the resolution. But the 7900 XT is still 60% ahead of the 4070. And the 1% lows show similar results with the 6950 XT 10% ahead of the 4070 and the 7900 XT 55% ahead of the 4070. The 7900 XT averaging over 250 frames per second at 1440p balanced in this title. At 1080p balanced, uh, we now see the 4070 again climbing relatively to the 6950 XT as the resolution drops. It's now 1% ahead of the 6950 XT in the averages, although the 6950 XT is 3% ahead in the 1% lows, so really it's basically a tie at 1080p. But the 7900 XT is still asserting its dominance at 1080p now, with 59% lead over the 6950 XT and 49% better in the 1% lows. All of the GPUs offering over 200 FPS, but the 7900 XT over 330 FPS. Now let's look at Resident Evil 4 Remake at 4K maximum preset, which does include some ray tracing, and despite ray tracing being included, the AMD GPUs are pretty far ahead. The 6950 XT, 21% ahead of the 4070, and the 7900 XT, 39% ahead of the 4070. What's going on? Well, the AMD GPUs are using well over 12 gigabytes of VRAM, so that certainly could be playing into the matter. Um, it could also be memory bandwidth at these settings at 4K. 
Now, if we drop down to the prioritize graphics preset, which does not include ray tracing, we see similar relative scaling, although the overall frame rates are higher on all the GPUs, with 6950 XT 28% ahead of the 4070 and the 7900 XT 40% ahead of the 4070. So whether it's the VRAM capacity, which now we're not using more than 12 gigabytes, so it could just be the memory bandwidth on the 4070 struggling in this game at 4K resolution. It, because now when we drop down to 1440p and we go back to the maximum preset, which does include ray tracing and does use a lot of VRAM, uh, the uh, 4070 closes a lot of the gap. The 6950 XT is now 7% ahead of the 4070, and the 7900 XT is now 23% ahead of the 4070. The 1% lows give the AMD GPUs a larger advantage, 25% and 38% respectively over the 4070. Uh, again, could be factoring, factoring in VRAM. If at 1440p we turn off ray tracing by going to the prioritize graphics preset, we now see the AMD GPUs uh, take a little bit more of the lead back again with the 6950 XT ahead 24% over the 4070 and the 7900 XT 30% ahead of the 4070. In the 1% lows, it's a bit less dramatic of a victory, but it's still 11% and 15% ahead of the 4070 respectively for the AMD GPUs. If we drop down to 1080p and go back to the maximum preset, which includes ray tracing, uh, again, dropping the resolution seems to help the 4070. It's now uh, basically tied with the 6950 XT. The 6950 XT has a 1% lead in the averages, but the 4070 has an 8% lead in the 1% lows. The 7900 XT also has an 8% lead, so, uh, uh, so basically tied with the 4070 and the 1% lows. And the 7900 XT has a 13% lead over the 4070 on the averages. Uh, at 1080p prioritize graphics, so no ray tracing involved here, we see the 6950 XT 18% ahead of the 4070, and we see uh, the 7900 XT 19% ahead of the 4070, so the two AMD GPUs are about tied here. It's possible that we're just kind of reaching the limits of the CPU. The frame rates are very high here, over 200 FPS on the AMD GPUs and the 4070 hanging out around 180 FPS. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at Cyberpunk at 4K Ultra preset. Cyberpunk 2077 uh, is able to almost hit 60 FPS on the 7900 XT, whereas the 6950 XT is kind of hanging out in the mid 40s and the 4070 is hanging out in the mid 30s. So there's wide scaling between the GPUs in this game with the 6950 XT 25% ahead of the 4070 and the 7900 XT 58% ahead of the 4070. The 1% lows see even larger wins for AMD with a 28% lead and 66% lead respectively. If we go down to 1440p resolution at the ultra preset, we now see the 6950 XT 18% ahead of the 4070 and the 7900 XT 51% ahead of the 4070. In the 1% lows, the 4070 and 6950 XT are tied. However, the 7900 XT has a 41% lead. All of the GPUs are faring much better here with the 4070 over 80 FPS, well, around 80 FPS, the 6950 XT over 90 FPS, and the 7900 XT just barely shy of 120 frames per second. So very good results for all of them there. Now let's test out some heavy duty ray tracing so Cyberpunk 2077 at RT Ultra preset, none of the GPUs perform very well. Uh, the 4070 is only in the mid 30 FPS range. The 6950 XT is down in the 20s and the 7900 XT is also in the mid 30s, very close to the performance of the 4070. But the 4070 does have a lead here. It's 37% ahead of the 6950 XT, and the 7900 XT is 30% ahead of the 6950 XT. We see fairly similar results in the 1% lows, but I don't think almost anyone would choose to play with these settings even on the 4070. So most likely either turn off ray tracing or turn on upscaling. So here we're looking at quality upscaling at 1440p with the RT Ultra preset. Uh, here we can see that the 4070, when using DLSS quality versus the FSR2 quality results, uh, but without frame generation, the 4070 is 33% ahead of the 6950 XT, and the 7900 XT is 22% ahead of the 6950 XT. And we see similar results in the 1% lows. 
The 4070 in this game, and some other games, although certainly not all of them, can enable frame generation as well, further boosting performance, but that comes with a latency penalty, although at these frame rates, I think the latency feels good for a single player game. And at these frame rates, I think the image quality does look pretty good as well. So it offers a certainly a compelling feature advantage here. Also in general, even without using frame generation, I do think that at 1440p quality upscaling, DLSS does look better than FSR. There's many videos exploring that topic in more detail, and I'll talk a bit more about it in my final thoughts section. As usual, let's start with some division on a calculator. At the current lowest prices on PC part picker, the 7900 XT is 720, the 4070 is 600, and that would be a 1.2 times the price, or in other words, a 20% price in increase if you bought the 7900 XT instead of the 4070. However, we did see that promo code bringing it down to 705 has been available for several days now, and that brings this down to about an 18% uh, price premium to get the 7900 XT over the 4070. Now, compared against the 6950 XT is very similar, however, it would be more like 705 uh, divided by $580, so, you know, 22% more expensive. But the point is, it's it's around a 20% uh, price increase to get the 7900 XT over the $600 models from both AMD and NVIDIA. And so what did we see in terms of performance uplift? Well, if every game ran as well on the 7900 XT as Returnal does, I think it would be a pretty obviously, yeah, it's worth it, right? Um, seeing a almost 50% performance uplift over the 4070 is great, and then still justifying its price increase over the 6950 XT from AMD. However, we certainly didn't see those results in every single game. Uh, there were games like The Last of Us Part 1, uh, where uh, the AMD GPUs did seem to underperform compared to the 4070, especially as you change the resolution. Uh, however, at 4K resolution, if we hop back to that, um, the 7900 XT was still not quite justifying its price, uh, but was close to it. It still did offer a performance benefit. Uh, however, again, when we drop down to the lower resolutions, the 4070 was pulling ahead. That did seem to be a bit of an outlier, though. And uh, the 7900 XT was still usually ahead even in some ray tracing titles like for Spoken, especially ones that were very VRAM hungry, uh, where the 7900 XT was justifying both its price increase over the 6950 XT uh, and even offering um, about even scaling over the 4070, even with ray tracing enabled. Um, again, so there was a variety of results, but oftentimes the 7900 XT was offering at least the 20% uh, performance uplift that you were looking for, um, or more, uh, which was certainly nice to see. Now, where it was a little bit less compelling was, um, you know, with ray tracing enabled, but again, it was still usually faster than the 4070, depending on the title. And then there were certain standout titles like Call of Duty, so if you spend a lot of time playing that, where the 7900 XT was absolutely crushing the $600 GPUs. Of course, they were still offering a very good experience, um, so it wasn't like that game would be unplayable for them. And again, we did seem to see places where the 12 gigabytes of VRAM, or maybe it's just the low memory bandwidth, but either way, at high resolutions like 4K, um, and in certain games, the 7900 XT did seem to definitely pay off versus the 4070, and the 4070 did seem to struggle more at 4K resolution uh, than it did at 1440p or 1080p. Uh, so definitely some interesting results. Now, we should note that in the heavier and more NVIDIA-focused uh, ray tracing titles was the place where the 4070 did sometimes show a lead over the 7900 XT, but it's important to note that um, the the 4070 was not that much faster at something like 1440p RT Ultra in Cyberpunk compared to the 7900 XT, although it was faster and does cost less. Also, NVIDIA does have reasons to buy it other than raw performance. Uh, we should mention things like upscaling and frame generation and things like that. And we did test that out at the end of the video. And here we see not only that uh, I, I, uh, the image quality offered by DLSS at the quality setting at 1440p does 
uh, hold stability better and, and I think offer better overall image quality compared to FSR2 at the same quality upscaling. Uh, we see that that does make the 4070 able to uh, hit over 60 FPS in a heavy ray tracing title at 1440p using DLSS quality while looking a bit better because of DLSS quality versus FSR2 quality, uh, you know, image looking better. And again, this video is not gonna be a deep dive in, into the image quality. I really recommend uh, Hardware Unbox tested something like, was it like 26 games or something like that uh, and did a detailed image quality comparison just a couple of months ago. I'd recommend looking at that. Um, I mean, do the image quality uh, advantage here as well as then frame generation which uh, is a situationally useful feature, but I think is definitely nice to have uh, because it does have a, uh, an impact to latency. You wouldn't want to use it in competitive titles and you do want a high enough base frame rate, uh, which I think we get here. If your base frame rate's around 60, uh, then frame generation in a single play player title, I feel will still uh, feel very responsive. And um, again, with the base frame rate high enough, I think the image quality still usually looks very good as well because there's not a large difference between the two frames that you're interpolating between. So again, you need a game that supports it, which not every game does. You want a single player game uh, and you want a game where you're already getting a high enough base frame rate for this to be useful. But when you do meet those conditions, I think that, for example, playing Cyberpunk at 1440p RT Ultra with DLSS quality and frame generation enabled does look very good and feel very good to play and is offering an experience um, that the uh, 7900 XT just simply isn't able to match, although it should be noticed, no, sorry, noted that the 7900 XT, again, was not terrible at ray tracing. It is offering around 60 frames per second with FSR2 quality, and FSR2 quality does look usable at 1440p. It's just not giving you as good of an experience as we get here from the, from the 4070, which is also less expensive. Um, that being said, I think that this is more of a, like I said, a, a outlier case because you need a lot of conditions to be met for this to be um, the situation that you're in, right? And a lot of people, rather than taking the upscaling route uh, to make the ray tracing performance uh, good, because note that the, uh, the native resolution RT performance on the 4070 in a heavy ray tracing workload like this wasn't really very good. Uh, some people, rather than just uh, using upscaling and frame generation to make that usable, uh, other people might just pull back to something like um, just playing at native 1440p ultra with no ray tracing, in which case we saw a massive 120 FPS versus 80 FPS lead for the 7900 XT. So uh, you'll definitely want to think about which of those features... Um, so which of those options makes more sense to you? Would you rather turn off ray tracing to get the higher native frame rate, or would you rather enable the upscaling and frame generation features that are gonna allow the, uh, the ray tracing uh, effects to be left in? And different people are gonna be drawn to different results there, um, but that option certainly shouldn't be ignored on the 4070, and I do hope AMD does eventually come out uh, with a solid competitor uh, with FSR3, but we have been waiting quite a while now, and I don't, don't think you should buy things based on something that might happen and might be good in the future rather than where we actually are right now. Um, the other thing uh, with NVIDIA GPUs to think about is if you're using these for productivity workloads, uh, there are a lot of productivity apps that are programmed with CUDA core acceleration in mind. That being said, many apps work as well uh, or better on an AMD GPU, especially given when I say or better, uh, the 7900 XT here does have 20 gigabytes of VRAM, which in certain productivity workloads is going to be a major advantage over a 12 gigabyte card like the 4070. And the 6950 XT here, we shouldn't ignore as well. I've already done uh, detailed head-to-head -head comparisons of the 6950 XT versus the 4070 um, and given some thoughts on that, but you certainly saw a revisit of that in this video. Um, I think, again, it, the 6950 XT is faster than the 4070 and can be noticeably faster, although it's not just absolutely, you know, crushing it. Like the 7900 XT, uh, in a lot of situations is offering just a completely different experience, whereas the 6950 XT often offers a better experience, um, but at the cost of power draw. That's another thing that we should talk about here. And also when I'm talking about power draw, the, uh, the AMD 6000 series GPUs did not report their full power draw uh, for the total board uh, to the stats counters the way that the 7900 XT does. 
Um, so these are actually drawing a more similar amount of power than it might look. And then the 4070 is um, just offering significantly less power. I just realized I think I'm going to need to zoom uh, zoom this thing out in order to show that to you. Why is it not showing up? Ah, sorry guys. I film these things live at the end and I don't always have the um, the uh, stuff all lined up exactly where it needs to be. There we go. There's the power draw on the 4070. You can see it up at the top there. Um, under 200 watts in this particular scene. Uh, so again, very interesting stuff. Uh, if, if you're uh, thinking about whether you have to upgrade your power supply or not, that could be relevant. Um, and also just the amount of heat being output into your room, uh, stuff like that. Uh, between all of these GPUs, my 6950 XT uh, certainly was the loudest, uh, but again, that's the particular cooler model that we're looking at here. But here's the main thing I've got to say, is that when the 7900 XT launched at $900, it didn't make any sense. It didn't even make that much sense versus a 6950 XT, because while in some games it does offer a, a large performance jump, we can see a lot of games uh, where the, the gap between the 6950 XT and the, and the 7900 XT isn't that huge. And so when the price difference was massive, the 7900 XT was offering worse value than just buying the last generation 6950 XT. Whereas at its current price point, it usually offers um, either even performance per dollar scaling, uh, like we're seeing here, or offers... Um, uh, a big jump in, in certain titles, but not every title. But the point is that on average now, it does seem like the 7900 XT is offering at least enough to justify its price over the 6950 XT and probably, and then some. Also, uh, the newer generation does have AV1 encoding, which is nice to have, uh, which the 6950 XT doesn't. The 4070 does have the AV1 encoding. Um, so uh, that that's another, um, Another reason to go with the 7900 XT over the 6950 XT. So my final conclusion in this video, I, I think is actually that I could see an argument for buying any of these three GPUs over the other ones. Um, whereas when the 7900 XT launched, I don't think it was worth considering. And honestly, it wasn't even in the same price class to consider with these other GPUs. At this point in time, sitting at that $700 price point, kind of by itself, right? We've got these two GPUs in this video at $600 versus is it worth $100 more on the 7900 XT? And we can see in a lot of cases, it is offering more than a 20% uh, performance uplift um, while offering it you know, for 20% more money, uh, which can be compelling. So I think the 7900 XT can make a case for itself. It also has 20 gigabytes of VRAM versus the 12 gigabytes on the 4070. We didn't see a lot of situations where 12 gigabytes was causing issues for the 4070, especially at 1440p. Um, the memory bandwidth at 4K and things like that. So at 4K resolution, I think the extra performance on the 7900 XT along with the extra VRAM uh, certainly does help it make an argument for itself at 4K resolution. At 1440p resolution, the other two GPUs um, are more at home and would still deliver a, a great experience, and the 12 gigabytes of VRAM becomes less of a concern at 1440p. Although, you know, if you're hanging on to it for several years, I'm not saying you would never have an issue at 1440p um, with the 12 gigabytes of VRAM. So it's certainly, you know, again, something to consider with the 7900 XT. So I think there's definitely a case to be made for paying the extra $100 here. Uh, and if you're not paying the extra $100, you can think about between the 4070 and the 6950 XT. Uh, really comes down to, I think, how much you're interested in ray tracing, how much you're interested in energy efficiency and the AV1 encoder, um, because there certainly are some uh, feature advantages for the 4070 over the 6950 XT, although it did often match performance in light ray tracing workloads and offer more performance in, um, uh, in what should I say, non-ray traced workloads. And um, there, there were some outliers there and all that. So anyway, I'm interested what you guys think in the comment section. Overall, I would like to see the 7900 XT actually come down to more like the 600 or $650 price range and see the 4070 push down closer to the $500 price range. Um, but overall, I think this performance gap between the cards at least makes a lot more sense than it did when the 7900 XT launched. And it does now offer a compelling reason 
to maybe spend the extra $100 uh, to get the 20 gigabytes of VRAM and increased performance um, over the other two $600 cards. Are you guys interested in, in these at this price point? Let me know what you think in the comment section. And I hope this uh, detailed comparison was useful and interesting for you, and I hope all of you have an excellent day.